Hi everyone, we are here with Ben Joe from Bybit. He's a CEO, so nice to meet you. Thanks for coming and thanks for spending some time with us today to answer the main topics and questions. Thank you for inviting me on the show. Glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah, we are also with Lucas. Uh, so we will like together ask some questions about the current situation on the market, about the FTX crash, about the security of funds on Bybit. So yeah, maybe the first uh, question I would like to ask you, maybe the broad question about the recent market crash, the FTX situation. Uh, what do you think about what this means to the crypto space? Because we will see some more regulations as a re result of this, or, or how the Bybit generally look at the prospect of more government intervention. How do you think? Yeah, so I, I think uh, obviously, uh, you know, FTX being one of the largest player in the industry, um, uh, exploded so fast and and they were extremely involved with regulators especially the US regulators um so i think this definitely would uh uh put a dent uh, on the whole industry and uh as far as regulation regulator concern i think they will definitely get more involved and try to get you know a uh, regulated space to prevent future uh, events like this from happening uh, from an overall industry's perspective, I think people will lose uh, in the short short run will lose confidence in uh, especially centralized players such as exchanges, uh, you know, lending and borrowing services. Uh, but in the middle to long run, I think uh, I'm still very bullish. I think Bitcoin and blockchain as as a, as an immutable protocol uh, will still uh, be here, uh, and we will uh, move on from this uh, this bad incident. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next question is going to be like a little bit obvious in my opinion, but still I think that uh, we need to ask it. Um, like for now, seeing as the entire crypto community is now worried about situations such as one with the FTX uh, repeating, uh, what are your plans to like for addressing those fears? Uh, are we going to see such a things like uh, proof of reserves, for example? Yeah, so Bybit is, of course, uh, I think moving on from this in, uh, incident, uh, all the exchange will require to obviously show proof of reserves so that uh, to show that you're not user use users fund uh, and to uh, to do whatever you want, you know. So Bybit is working uh, dedicatedly on, on making the proof of reserve happens. Uh, Currently, uh, we are talking to different uh, auditors uh, to make sure that uh, they can audit our Merkle tree. Uh, with the Merkle tree solution, uh, we will take a snapshot of all the uh, users on Bybit and their balances uh, and to capture during the specific moment and have that audited and then show the uh, the wallets uh, to the auditors so that they can cross check and, and, and make sure that the user's funds are stored safely in a wallet. Uh, so for Bybit, uh, we have always seen ourselves as a custodian service and uh, all the user's funds are stored in our you know hot and warm wallets. Um, I, I do acknowledge that uh, uh, some of the exchange have already released uh, wallet information, uh, and, and a lot of people has been asking, is Bybit going to release the wallet information? Uh, uh, we are actually working with the Nansen's team uh, to capture uh, some of our cold wallets. Uh, the, the previously, uh, there was a problem of capturing some of the Bybit cold wallet because uh, it was a multi-sync taproot kind of uh, uh, wallet that uh, none of these guys can capture. So uh, I think the problem will be solved very soon and we are willing to uh, release uh, a majority of our cold wallet and, and uh, uh, information. But again, um, wallet information does not equal proof of reserve. Uh, I, I think a lot of people already have been criticizing some exchanges that released wallet information because you, you don't know whether it's clients fine or borrowed money or, or liabilities. So at the end of the day, is you, you still got to rely on auditors and and also Merkle Tree and and even uh, future solutions to check your balances on chain directly. So these are the things we're working on, but those things will take some time. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely a great information for for the people for the users of Bybit. Uh, so yeah. Ben, can you tell us a little bit uh, how exactly users fund are secured at Bybit? Of course, it could be hard to explain everything because there is a lot of complicated things behind the scenes and all of that. But maybe just a little bit, can you explain how it works uh, to show people that everything is all right? Yeah. So. Uh... Well, it's a very complicated, hot, warm, and cold wallet uh, solution. Um, 
so when clients make a deposit, it's into their uh what well, the, the the platform hot wallet that's been assigned to each user, right? And and after you deposit, it, it will take maybe twenty to thirty minutes to consolidate into our uh, warm wallet, which requires uh uh, uh you know uh encrypted keys and all that to consolidate all, all of that. And and then based on the level of the benchmark of how how much proportion of the total user asset is in the warm wallet, uh, we will automatically move funds into the cold wallet. Uh, on a regular basis, we try to keep about eighty percent in our uh, cold wallet. Uh, however, during a a period like this, like last week uh, and this week, uh, users are withdrawing a lot, uh, and that's when we need to deploy a lot more uh, uh, portion into the uh, warm wallet. And, and also move quite a bit of funds from the cold wallet into the warm uh, to get ready for clients withdrawal. So I, I think at the end of the day, uh, the best proof of reserve is to make sure clients, whenever they want to withdraw, you withdraw it in an extremely fast manner. And, and, and so nobody is concerned. And I think I'm very proud to say up until now, uh, all of the users on Bybit didn't have any withdrawal problem. And this is our guarantee. Uh, and no slowdown in speed. Uh, everything's normal. It's even faster than before. Yeah. And if you seen, have a question, yeah. live chats are, are there to help you. I think this is the best kind of proof to show you that, look, we're here. We understand your concern. Let, let, let's help the users to release their ease. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, actually, because like um, a lot of other exchanges had a problem with the withdrawing money. Okay, so yeah. that's that's great. Um, okay, so now maybe I will ask a question about the um, BitDAO token because I think it's also like important. Uh, because someone on Twitter asked me a couple of days ago um, that um, uh, CZ, like the CEO of uh, Binance, posted a tweet saying that uh, people should avoid, for example, um, projects, but also the exchanges that have a large total supply of their tokens, but there is only a small circulation of supply and uh, isn't it similar to like Bybit and their BitDAO token? Yeah, so it's it's actually very different. Uh, be, reason being, number one is Bybit was not established based on a token rate. Uh, FTX, I think they raised capital initially from FTT, uh, same as many other exchanges. Uh, but we, we started the BitDAO initiative last year. Uh, and Bybit has been around, uh, you know, three, four years. And I think we even worked with you guys before we released yeah, yeah. the, the, the bid down, right? So we were, it was, it was not a raising fund effort uh, to support the business. We had a perfect business and very healthy cash flow business before bid down. Uh, and now let's look at bid down. Bid down is extremely opposite of many other projects because we actually inject daily cash into the treasury. <laughs> so if you look at bid down. Uh, the treasury has now two, two, two billion something in it. Uh, half of it is cash contributed by Bybit. So, uh, and, and actually you cannot use Bit token to, to do any collateralized because uh, there's a huge treasury there, right? And, 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 and Bybit, we've never uh, uh, borrowed money from any entities. Uh, there's no need. Uh, and actually on the opposite, we contribute into BitDAO. So if you look at the BitDAO treasury, you can see the cash is sitting in there. Uh, so quite the opposite, rather than using it as a collateral, we actually put money into it. So this is how I think BitDAO is very different than any of these other tokens. Yeah. So even if there is a little deduction on the price of BitDAO, everything should be great because there is no correlation with the cash flow of Bybit at, at all, right? Uh, there's only contribution. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's not, like we don't rely on BitDAO for any, anything. And, and as you know, that's, that's something that I wish they could do better, but BitDAO price has been dropping uh, during the beer market. Of course. Uh, and even if uh, we want to use BitDAO's collateral, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> it's not a major token in the world, but I, I'm very bullish on it because uh, a layer two is coming out and which project can claim they have 2 billion in the bank openly yeah. in the public. Uh, and, and I think uh, in the future it will pump and it, it would, uh, I wouldn't use, use the word pump, but uh, uh, more use case will come out way, 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 with the layer two coming out uh, and Bybit fully supporting the BitDAO initiative. Yeah. yeah, great to hear that anyway. So 
Yeah. Uh, maybe another question, uh, a bit different than previous ones, uh, because with the recent market crash, right, we could probably see a lot of retail investors, they are like turn, turning away from cryptocurrencies, they are afraid, scared, uh, so at, at least for the time uh, right now. So how long do you think this will last? Because th there are some plans uh, for encouraging investors to stay in the space, what Bybit can do in this, in this problem, in this situation. Yeah, so I, I think overall on the industry uh, level, I think there will be more repercussions. Um, I, I think FTX going down, it's still part of the reproduction, repercussion of Luna. I, I think Alameda lost a lot of money in Luna. So we're still seeing the repercussion of that. So FTX, I think there are so many players and there's an $8 billion or whatever hole. You can imagine there are a lot of people involved, not just individuals, probably companies as well. Um, so I'm expecting to see a lot more company probably announcing they have problems in, in the following weeks. Uh, but I think crypto, everything moves extremely fast, right? I mean, FTX went down, you know, in three days. So I think the repercussion will happen probably a month or so. Things will quiet down. Um, but And then we'll move on from it again, uh, slowly and gradually, right? Uh, from exchange perspective, I, I think we just need to be more uh, demonstrating, more transparent and also work with all the other players in the industry. I think at this point it is to prove as an industry to, to ordinary people and regulators that we can be self-regulated uh, and, uh, and not all players are bad in the industry. Uh, so I, I think we just got to work together and kind of create that positive image again. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's I think, important. Um... FTX, what are your thoughts about it? Like, what went wrong in your opinion, like in general? And um, do yeah. you think that the that the catastrophe of that um, could have been avoided in some way, or it was um, it was just it had to happen at some way because they do things which they did? Yeah. Well, so first, I think. Um... It cannot be avoided, right? I don't think it was anyone's trying to poke their things. And then, I mean, at some point, they're going to get exposed because if they had 12 billion user fund and they used 8 billion, I mean, <laughs> that's that's insane. So <laughs> sooner or later, they will be exposed. Um, just a chain of event happened and they got exposed very quickly. Um, for us, uh, as exchange, um, we have our numbers. We run the same business. And, you know, during the beer market, we were always talking internally, like, where does FTX get all this money? Um, you know, investing in these things, crazy, all these projects. Seems like they just had endless amounts of money to invest. Uh, the only rationale we could explain and to comfort ourselves was that they had Alameda. And, and, and Alameda must be so good at trading and was making a killing. <laughs> so this is something that we don't have in Bybit. So, um, and that's kind of the rationale we had. But when the news came out, I think it caught everyone uh, in, by surprise. Uh, and, um, and you start to see that, oh, you know, um, they did trade badly, probably during the Luna crash. And then had a huge hole and then they used FTT as collateral to borrow real money from FTX, which is users fund, uh, to fill the hole. So I think that that kind of was a very bad decision and uh, caused this whole, whole problem. Yeah. Yeah, that was the main problem in the industry and in the business. So the question right now I'm going to ask you is a bit correlated with previous one because of course, and for sure, in my fan base, among my fan base, there is a lot of people who still haven't decided to use Bybit Exchange, to use your exchange. Uh, so maybe if you can inform us a little bit, what's the added value, let's say, of Bybit in comparison with other competitors, with other exchanges? What, what's the main reason why, why you are running, running the exchange? So Bybit had a, a few things that really stood out. Uh, number one is reliability. Uh, and the uptime. Uh, most people, uh, if you're a trader, uh, uh, Bybit is always available. We, we haven't gone down since the day we launched. Actually, there's no downtime. Uh, uh, and as a trader, that's very important to make sure you can capture every single volatility and movement. Uh, on, on top of that, uh, we, we have all the institutions, a lot of retail globally. That means our liquidity is very good uh, if you want to trade. Uh, so as far as uh, contract and, uh, uh, and derivatives trading, I think Bybit is definitely one of the top guys uh, globally for, for any traders. 
Uh, and now we've announced our released our copy trading, you know, uh, trading bot, which made trading a lot easier, even for people who don't know how to trade. Uh, but on top of that, over the last uh, two years, uh, we have, you know, developed a lot more product other than derivatives. We are now, I would say, a, a one kind of super app, a one-stop shop for any crypto uh, lovers. So you can use this for fiat on-ramps, uh, P2P credit card, you know, uh, spot trading. We have some amazing uh, token listings happening. Although I think it will slow down within the coming months uh, because the market, but uh, a lot of clients loves our uh, token listings and all that. Uh, and then we even have uh, 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 going to release a credit card very soon. Uh, we work with MasterCard. We actually talking to Red Bull. Uh, I think we're going to release a joint card <laughs> uh, uh, with Red Bull. Uh, uh, and so you can use your crypto uh, to spend, uh, whether it's stable coin or major token pairs. Yeah. And lastly is, is that I think uh, within two to, three, uh, two to three weeks, we are gonna, going to fully uh, incorporate a, a DEX on Bybit. That means uh, clients is able to trade directly on Bybit uh, using a, a DEX, decentralized uh, derivative exchange. Uh, we're going to incorporate with Apex uh, and uh, uh, it will be uh, very fast, instant transfers, uh, so clients can trade there directly if they lost confidence in centralized exchanges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's really great. That's really great. Um, as you said, like a minute ago, uh, Bybit is still one of the most technologically advanced exchanges in the world, and also I think the second largest when, when it comes to leverage trading. Um, Maybe you answer a little bit on that question, but still I will ask that what are the Bybit plans for continuing growth and eventually becoming an even better and more reputable platform? Yeah, so I think our job is to be the gateway of uh, to Web3. And, and this is something that I think Bybit is going to be uh, very unique on, is that we will embrace the whole Web3 uh, ecosystems whether it's uh, Ethereum, whether it's uh, uh, Solana, or even uh, Binance uh, ecosystems. Uh, our job is to bring people to the amazing Web3 world, what has to offer. And this is why I think continue forward, uh, we are go going to build a lot of manpower and product onto that, uh, to onboard users directly to DeFi, NFT, uh, or, or anything that's to do with decentralization. So incorporating us into a DEX is the first step and user can directly trade on a DEX in a centralized exchange, meaning that you can get the ease of usability, user experience as well, customer support, if you don't understand how to use it, we'll give you all that. Because I think for, for, for Web3 or DeFi or, or any of these things, it's, it's still very difficult for any uh, fresh new users uh, of crypto. It's too hard to understand, like MetaMask, all these things is so difficult to see, to remember. So we're gonna lower all that crazy uh, barrier of entries and make it super easy, just like register account on Bybit, uh, and 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 we take care of all of it. And also, if you want to, let's say, purchase certain things on Solana with Ethereum, you know how like how many steps you have to click on, on your ledger or whatever to do all that. We're gonna remove all that and make it so easy, so you feel uh, kind of still a centralized experience, but you are actually on a decentralized platform. So that's something we're gonna uh, we, we 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 will we will offer, and we believe that clients will come to Web three not just because, uh, it's Web three. It it is because all these amazing ways to opportunities to make money to explore, um, and we we which we just want to make things easier for them. Yeah. So you will able be to use decentralized uh, exchange inside of the centralized one or i i'm getting it, it, yeah. it wrong yeah so so we we actually recently announced a web3 wallet and this wallet is is a hybrid between centralized and, and decentralized wallet it looks and feels like a metamask uh, but all clients it, all, all it takes is register a bybit account with their email or phone number right the seed is centralized custodian with the bybit custodian service right that means we can do a lot of automations for clients, uh, even automated stop loss, automated take profit on, on DeFi minings. And, and also you can imagine uh, one of the client's biggest worry is that uh, rug pool uh, on, a, on a kind of liquidity mining, right? Uh, we can set automated triggers. If, uh, if LL, you know, LTV has been dropped dramatically within an hour, auto fund pullout. 
uh, things like that uh, to ease of use for users. Uh, and uh, of course, like let's let's say you go DeFi now, you have to put the liquidity in, get the liquidity token, store it. It's so complicated. We will make one one button uh, click for users to get the yield uh, uh, using the Web3, uh, our Web3 interface and our Web3 wallet. Uh, and among that is also uh, how to trade uh, directly on, on DEXs, such as Uniswap or SushiSwap or all that, using our wallet. But then they can also use the Bybit balance directly uh, and, and the transfer is instant. So we've incorporated that all into the whole ecosystem to make them things easier uh, for users to use. But to use that, the, can you like do it without KYC? Because I think that this like the basis of the you know DeFi exchange. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Know, so okay. so the Web3 wallet is just like a regular MetaMask. Um, there's no KYC, and um, and you can if people decide to they like our tools and this wallet, uh, they can even uh import their other wallet into this one to have the automation and all these easy use functionalities uh with the by the Web3 wallet. Yeah. What is great in Bybit, I think, is that you're trying to take care of the users and you're implementing a lot of other functionalities to combine it all together uh, to let it be easy to use for beginners also and for people who are advanced in trading. So that's a great app for everything in once. Uh, so the last question from me will be exactly about the uh, adopt adopting of uh, blockchain. So are you optimistic at all about decentralized technology uh, such as blockchain and becoming the mainstream at, across the whole globe, across the world. Because even though we are in bear market, right, we've seen a lot of adoption examples and all of that, like the res recent Polygon uh, being used for NFTs on Instagram. And how do you think how it's going to be in further years? Yeah, I, I think in the future, there's not, there's going to be a multi-chain kind of industry. There's not one chain that's the biggest, uh, I think, they're going to be a multi and, and then it's all kind of intermingled through EVM or bridges and all that. Right. And, 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 and the job for a centralized exchange like ours is no longer custodian or whatever. It's just gateway. Your job is a simple gateway because we are good at making things easier for users and connecting all the chains together. So for you, you can kind of intercross between these different universe or chains freely. Right. So I, I think this is, that's why we are focusing on that. And, and I think in the, in, with this vision, um, we have to embrace every single ecosystem. Uh, and this is again, by the way, we don't want to create our ecosystem because I believe Web3 is gonna be so much more than one. Uh, so we're gonna embrace whoever and whether it's, like I said, even Binance chain, <laughs> we, we don't, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever clients wants to go, we'll, we'll, we'll let them go. Yeah. yeah, to make it easier, perfect. Um, okay, so now when Mark asks the last question, I think I will also ask the last question and it will be like the broad one. And the, um, Do you have any um, predictions about the economy going forward? Like when do you think we'll say in an improvement in metrics such as inflation? And do you think, um, when do you think the next bull market will start? Uh, like, do you think it will happen around the time of the next Bitcoin halving at it was always, or now it can be different? Yeah, I, I think uh, not necessarily the halving because it's quite far away. Um, I, I think um, we, we are kind of hitting the bottom with FTX kind of blow up. <laughs> I, I don't think we could get anything worse than that. I think all of uh, what's about to happen is repercussion of FTX which kind of the market will neutralize and maybe the price will dip lower uh, gradually uh, to a point that, you know, it, it's getting a lot quieter than now. Uh, and, and then that's when we start to rebounds. I, I think with any rebounds, um, there was always a new technology or new thing that came out. I, I think with the last bull run was, it was kind of the DeFi mining and <laughs> different uh, liquidity pools and all these things, right? Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Uniswap, Sushi and all that came out. Um, so maybe with this new one, something will come out and, and then that's how it will bring people in again. And, and we, we just want to make sure that when that happens, we, we provide that product and that gateway for people. So people don't have to scratch their heads and figure out how to use MetaMask and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Ben, there is something you would like to ask on the end of our conversation. Maybe I forgot to ask something. Maybe you would like to spread the word. I don't know. Um, I think probably uh, was something I want to ask. Uh, feedbacks on Bybit, feedbacks on the user's uh, interface. You know, uh, I understand a lot of the communities are Bybit users. Uh, I want to assure that we will be here for a long time. Um, you know, we've always act very prudent. Uh, but, you know, we've always welcome uh, feedbacks. So if you do have some uh, good feedbacks, leave in the comment below and we will have our customer support agent to uh, to check. Yeah, and I'll get back to you guys. Yeah. yeah, so thank you very much for having a conversation with us today. Uh, and we wish you a good luck and confident with all the steps you are taking because you are doing great. And people in Poland love Bybit, but of course they needed some proof that everything is fine and we see now it's great. So thanks. Okay. And yeah, see you thank once you. again later. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ben.